Now, seeing that footage, uh, looking like it's like 150 uh, white men in khakis marching with masks, you might think that this is uh, an event designed to make sure that people understand that COVID is still a threat and we should all mask up. But no, it's not. They're white supremacists. It's the Patriot Front, and they were marching in D.C. over the weekend. They made a, uh, a a specific carve out for masks so that no one would know who they are. Because even they know how embarrassing and devastating it would be to their reputation for people to know what they actually believe and what they're really doing with their time as they march carrying shields and 201 wishing that they looked much tougher than they actually do. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they were marching and they did that. That's a thing that happened. If you wanna be worried about what that represents for America, I understand that. But the right, the people who they are desperately trying to form a militia for, is trying to pretend that they're not actually on their side. The Trump train tweeted, do you think the Patriot Front March on the US Capitol in Washington was a staged event by the Biden administration to distract Americans from the southern border <laughs> crisis? Yes or no? <laughs> oh, these poor white supremacists, what are they supposed to do? They finally organize, they all bust to DC, yeah. they kind of march in lockstep. And then they get denied by their side. It's sad. You hate I mean, to see it, Francesca. It's yeah, it's messed up. There they are protecting Americans from the Black Little Mermaid. All right, they're there on opening weekend saying no. Hans Christian <laughs> Anderson defended Western civilization in the water. And they're like, ah. No, it's just so funny. I love the false flag stuff. I love it's just my favorite when they're like, um, I feel like we are we are months away from the right being like, does anyone else feel like Donald Trump is an op against <laughs> the Donald Trump MAGA movement? Let's talk about it. Has he been in like that's really what they're saying? Like everything, like, oh God, no, this is you guys. This yeah. is what you've done. No, Francesca, I don't know. Is it a coincidence that Biden gave his white supremacist speech this morning? And then just hours later, a bunch of khaki clad federal agents. He just says they're federal agents. He doesn't have any evidence. He just said, no, every one of those is a federal agent because it needs to be because they make us look bad. Can they be any more obvious with these antics? Every single right winger who listens to their media, who absorbs the message of you gotta kill him, you gotta kill him, you gotta kill him, you gotta kill him, goes yeah. out and kills him and then gets rejected. Those who are organizing to be like, look, we got people, we're willing to do the violence that you mm -hmm. want us to do, gets rejected. I feel really bad for right wing extremists. You just can't get any respect. But anyway, as they pointed out there, Biden did give a speech about the danger of white supremacy. Take a look at that. White supremacy, as I did my inaugural address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. There are those that don't see you and don't want this future. There are those who demonize and pit people against one another. And there are those who do anything and everything, no matter how desperate or immoral, to hold on to power. And look, maybe it's not a coincidence that that happened around the time of the, the the march. Maybe the fact that we knew that they were gonna be marching is a good time to bring up how dangerous it is. Maybe the fact that this isn't the first time that they've marched in a city, that they're not the only white supremacist organization marching in different cities. Maybe the fact that we see so many lone wolves and groups like this uh, trying to intimidate people, trying to hurt people, trying to kill people, makes it something the president should talk about. Final thoughts, Francesca. I just think it's incredible to be upset at that speech that was, you know, not Biden's best teleprompter work, um, but you know, and and he's talking, you know, he's at Howard University, I believe, uh, or and and I think that it's good that he, I guess, is talking about white supremacy. But honestly, I'd rather have Biden talk about white supremacy to white people. Yes, there are white graduates at Howard University, but it's a historically black college. So I'm like, you know, you say that, but again, and say it more, say it loudly, say it clearly, and say it to white people. Old white man who we've deemed safe enough to like take this country from MAGAism to like a more acceptable, you know, slower burn of, you know, fascism. Like, what are you doing about it, buddy? You know, and so 
I don't know. I, 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 yeah. it is disgusting to see the Patriot front as always, but they're nerds. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're race nerds and they're gonna do it. They're gonna be out again and again and again and then pile themselves into U Hauls and then be like, no, oh, like you put the keys in my khakis. Oh, I don't, uh, I changed before we got, ah, and then they're gonna be locked in a parking garage. We know how this ends. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I look, I like him talking about it. I'm glad that he's talking about it and, and he can do it there. But to me, and look, I get that I'm a cynic. To me, talking about it there makes me think, and there's, I think, other reasons to think this, that this is, this is like what he does in elections. Yes. He like wants to reassure young people. He wants to reassure people of color that he's got their back so that they go and vote for him, which they do overwhelmingly and have saved his butt before. Yes. And then will he actually deliver? I don't know. Like if he was talking about it in other contexts, it would make me, it would reassure me that he really means it rather than he's just bringing it up then. Again, it's not, it is something that he's talked about before. So we'll see. But, but I understand your concern. And, and again, on that, on that group before we close, like they had to have had a conversation like, is this really the best we can do? Cause this just doesn't look great. It doesn't look intimidating. I mean, sure, they're white supremacists and all of them are desperately looking for enough chaos that they can get away with acting out on the violent impulses that they feel. But just visually, like talk to some cosplayers, talk to, honestly, talk to drag queens. Like there's a lot of people that just have <laughs> way more like pizzazz. I don't know, I just don't think they're they're doing their best. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.